Hey guys, it's Rachel. <coughs> it's Thursday, um, and uh, this week we're going to be looking at going back to school um, and trying to manage the stress of that. Sorry, I've just got out of the shower, hence why my hair looks completely soaking. Um, so yeah, so this week um, we're going to focus um, on going back to school. Um, my studies actually begin at the end of the month. Um, I'm studying through the Open University, so. Um, the 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 time period of studying is is quite difficult than 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 the standard time. So I'll be studying from the end of January, right the way through till the end of October. <coughs> um, it's something that I haven't done for about six months. Um, I had to pull out over the summer, um, but I know for a lot of you now that you you will have had your kind of winter break and you'll be going back. And and I know that certainly if people have got finals and stuff that'll be coming up in May. Um, whether that's GCSEs, A levels, finishing university, getting your degree, wh whatever really, um, even post grad study, um, and I know that it can be a particularly stressful time. Um, and the idea came up from Molly actually, um, and we decided to look at it this week because it is kind of the week that everyone's starting to go back to school. Um, I have tried to think about um, managing the stress really and, 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 and as always I kind of you know look to my own experiences and certainly last year I did put myself under a huge amount of pressure to achieve and I think that again that that's something that people with eating disorders really kind of struggle with I don't just mean people with eating disorders but given that this channel is kind of focusing on recovery from an eating disorder um, I think that it can be something, um, academics can be something that we very much focus on as a way to kind of escape what's going on. Um, eating disorders can leave us feeling quite detached from ourselves and, you know, your self-worth, self-esteem is, is pretty much, you know, bottom out, bottomed out really. and. And I think for a lot of people that are excelling in academics or sport or whatever within that kind of school university environment um, is certainly a way of, of trying to <coughs> elevate that self-esteem and that self-worth. Um, as to whether that works or not is it, kind of a bit of an empty question really because you know when you're in the throes of an eating disorder nothing you particularly do is good enough. Um, and so using all your energy in, in, in terms of achieving can in, so, in a lot of ways be quite counterproductive. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't achieve, it doesn't mean that you might not get the perfect grades, but it that mindset, um, although positive and you, if, if used in the right way can be very destructive. What I mean by positive is that I don't think there's anything wrong with having some drive and ambition and direction and goals. That is something that in recovery is actually quite important um, and what keeps me going at the moment is kind of having an idea of where I go. Um, but as we, we, we've spoken about over the past few weeks, for me it's not so much about the end goal, it's about pursuing that and, and, and kind of enjoying the ride a little bit. Um, when I did my degree, my first degree, I loved every minute of it and, and that's kind of the truth really, I really, really thrived. Um, and yeah, I did put myself under quite a bit of pressure at times, but I did love what I was doing and what's come with my postgrad study is that of course it's a lot more difficult but I haven't experienced the same amount of pleasure with it um, the cognitive aspect of it as I did with my degree and that's been quite difficult um, I am somebody who works quite hard I'm very determined quite industrious um, but as part of my recovery and, and a part of my therapy it has been dealing with that perfectionist nature and challenging that um, and I think what happened to me last year I was in quite a lot of denial about um, how much I was overdoing it really and, and, and how much of a perfectionist I was being and you know I was called on it in therapy and I kind of you know just denied it really and was like no 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 this is fine this is fine and what ultimately happened and obviously there were other, um, other circumstances that led to me breaking down was that that absolute like push and push and push just exhausted me to the point of just a complete meltdown. Um, 
as I say, I think, you know, it's positive to feel like we want to achieve and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But we do have to find balance and our life can't only about if we're in school, university or whatever, it can't only be about our academics or being this perfect student who does music, who does sport, who does all of this. It's important to have a wide range of activities to be doing and to be a well rounded person. But you need to remain grounded as well and you know for me my kind of advice and it's like I said last week is to have that time out for yourself because you know being a workaholic isn't particularly going to get you anywhere and it is going to make you more ill and part of your recovery from an eating disorder of course alongside with stabilizing your eating and your weight and not using behaviors is also challenging a lot of the traits that are synonymous with an eating disorder one of those being perfectionism and that perfectionism being used in academics a lot of people a huge amount of people and certainly in my experience and the people I've met with eating disorders are highly intelligent and very well educated and those those attributes um, if used in the wrong way can can be even more destructive for a person and you know it's like with an eating disorder all of the things that get you sick all of that kind of control and containment and energy motivation determination goal setting if used destructively obviously was going to land us in hospital and very very poorly but if we can use that towards ourselves so it's about using all of those the, the, using all of that energy and, and, and th that we put into destroying ourselves because that's essentially what it is as we deteriorate with an eating disorder if we can shift the balance and move it towards something then we're going to be able to achieve recovery and that's certainly something that I learned to do it was kind of like I'm using all of this energy to destroy myself what would happen if I used that energy to to help myself and and what has come from that is full recovery from an eating disorder something I didn't know that would be possible and so within a school environment <clears throat> use that energy but be mindful of using that energy in, an, in, a, in a destructive and overworking way and if you feel yourself just completely getting lost in your work and that you're overtired and all the rest of it you need to take a step back because at the end of the day what you're achieving in school isn't the end of the world <laughs> I know people who've been to uni completely bummed out and have brilliant jobs and yeah you're there because you maybe want to do well and achieve and as I've said there's nothing wrong with that but it isn't the be all and end all it isn't everything that you are and it is important to develop yourself as a person as well rather than just than focusing on academics and extracurricular activities it's important to have a wider network of things that you're doing um, and what can quite often happen is that people do do a lot of things then it becomes difficult to achieve but achieve in the sense that you would like to because you're doing so much but I think that if you don't expect yourself to be perfect and to have these amazing grades or become the best runner in the school just allow yourself to be a little bit and what I actually found is when I took you know it, when I slowed myself down and said right Rachel you know you're putting too much pressure on yourself it's actually when I excelled because I wasn't under this tight kind of scrutiny of myself and and pressure and just complete stress and when I actually let go a little bit I realized that I could achieve and I could achieve in a very positive way and when I got my first for my degree and stuff that wouldn't necessarily have happened or maybe it would have but when I achieved that I wasn't in a state of complete meltdown it wasn't like I completed the year and then crashed I was in a good place, I was in a positive place and something that I did do during that time and maybe a little bit too much you know, on, in, in reflection w was I did go running and that kind of helped use up some of that kind of stress but of course in recovery from an eating disorder you have to monitor that carefully but maybe by just getting out in the fresh air and walking for 20 minutes in between your studies or like going for a coffee with a friend you need to put balance in your life because you're not just you're not just a person who is a brain, you're a person as a whole person and academics, whilst important in terms of achieving what you want to achieve, 
I'm not all that you are. You're, you're greater than that. You're greater than your eating disorder. And you deserve to feel good about yourself. And you deserve to feel good about yourself in different ways other than just by getting the highest grades in the class or whatever. So I hope that's just some sort of reassurance, really, because I know a lot of people just really, really struggle to let go of that perfectionism. And what I'm trying to say in this video is that it's okay. It's okay not to be perfect. And if people are putting that expectation on yourself, it's okay to say, do you know what? But it's not the end of the world that I got, like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I got I got 65% instead of 75% or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, if you try, that's all you can do, and you also have to have balance in your life. So I hope that this video, more than anything, rather than advice, is just a reassurance that you don't have to be perfect. And I will see you next week, guys. Okay, bye.